हेलो डियर स्टूडेंट्स आई वेलकम यू ऑल फॉर टूडेज क्लास एंड टुडे वी आर गोइंग टू लर्न अबाउट द लिटरेरी डिवाइस आई एम जरी नाज एंड आई एम गोइंग टू टीच यू दीज लिटरेरी डिवाइस फर्स्ट वी हैव टू नो वॉट इज़ द मीनिंग ऑफ लिटरेरी डिवाइस लिटरेरी डिवाइस आर द टेक्निक्स दैट राइटर्स यूज टू एक्सप्रेस देयर आइडियाज एंड इन्हांस देयर राइटिंग दीज लिटरेरी डिवाइस दीज टेक्निक्स आर गोइंग टू यूज टू इन्हांस द इफेक्ट एंड द इंटेंसिटी ऑफ द राइटिंग A figure of speech is a deviation from the ordinary use of words in order to increase their effectiveness. The second definition shows that the writers use that literary devices to increase the effectiveness of the writing work. No doubt when we use these literary devices it uh, ultimately if uh, you know enhance our writing and it gives a nice impact on the reader and uh, that increase the intensity as well and it create a bonds between the writer and writing work. So let's uh, know about what is what are the importance of these literary devices. First of all, that literary device enhances the beauty of the writing work. It makes the sentence deeper and leaves the reader with a sense of wonder. When you uh, read that uh, some uh, kind of uh, you know very um, beautiful lines and uh, that lines of which gives you some wonder, so that gives some impact and then impact will last of. longer in your mind or on your feelings the figure of a speech not only shows the writer's intent but also his purpose of using such language means that figure of a speech uh, shows um, shows a writer intent not only it shows the writer intent but is also shows the purpose of using such language means that different language which the writer is going to use um via using that literary devices it gives a nice impact it adds a flavor to the writing and makes it so much more enjoyable for the reader no doubt we read those literary text just to get some enjoyment and while reading those literary devices we feel that enjoyment right so today we are dealing with some types of literary devices which i have selected for you uh, which comes under your syllabus the first one is simile metaphor alliteration oxymoron personification irony hyperbole imagery and symbol so these are the some selective literary devices there are in number of literary devices but in your bs syllabus these literary devices are enough The first one is simile where a simile is a comparison between the two unlike things so using the words like or as so this is a very simple figure of speech where these two words if you find like or as then 100% this is a simile but that the comparison of the two things uh, that the comparison of the two things which is totally unlike they are not like together but they are compare like as a sl- slippery as an eel like peas in a pod as blind as a bat these are the examples as blind as bat that so you are unable to see like a bat means a bat and your eyes they don't have any comparison they don't have any connection to each other but here that bat and your blindness is compare it's like a pig means so the way of eating and pig they are comparing here as wise and an owl so these the comparison are doing here between the two unlike things now the next one is metaphor a metaphor makes a comparison between two unlike things or ideas but there is a direct comparison in the simile uh, you know the word like and as the writer going to use but in that metaphor there is no such words we use we just directly compare two things so for example the heart of a stone means your heart it turns into a stone there is a no comparison between your heart and stone but the writer says your heart turns into a stone means your heart as a stone or heart of a stone if as and like that word is used that is simile but here of word uh, of conjunction is used so heart of is stone the next one is time is money means money and time they both are you know uh, compared to each other 
she is a night owl he is an or so these kind of two things are they directly compared to each other very simple the next one is alliteration alliteration is the repetition of the beginning sound of the neighboring words neighboring words means means the words which comes adjacently one by one and their first sound not later sometimes h is silent sometimes p is silent in psychology so that is sound we will you know connect so in the alliteration that the two adjacent sounds are neighboring sounds they are same for example she sells she sells wo jo girl hai she is selling to a she sells so that is sound is repeatedly you know coming here walter wondered where wine was blue baby bonnets bobbed through the bayou so this bbb sound is come you know coming one by one so this is called alliteration this is again a very simple device oxymoron in oxymoron and oxymoron is a two contradictory terms used together means a two words two words are used in oxymoron and they opposite to each other but they use so that words are uh, called as oxymoron that peace force these words peace and force they both are related to not related to each other sweet sorrow and so there is a sorrow but that sorrow that grief is sweet and in a reality there is a no kind such uh, such kind of sorrow which which is really sweet so there is a different word which is used here they both are opposite so that device is called as a oxymoron the next one is personification the word person itself says its a definition personification gives the human qualities to a non non living things or ideas means here we called some non living thing as a living thing for example the flower no flowers nodded nodded means uh, means you when you uh, you know move your head this is called as a nodding that means that flowers is nodding so that quality that only human contains a nodding of head so writer here says that flowers nodded so this is example of personification the thunder grumbled so this kind of grumbling uh, which uh, you know had has a human quality so the writer gives this quality to a non living thing the next one is irony irony or sarcasm is a figure of speech in which the usage of words conveys the opposite of their literal meaning here again in oxymoron there is a one by one opposite words are used but in irony what what it uh, calls it conveys the opposite literal meanings means likha hua kuch aur hai aur matlab kuch aur aa raha hai uska that is called as a irony jisse tanqeed karna kahenge okay these are the often used in a humorous manner sometimes and sometimes in a you know very deep manner as well for example your hands are as clean as mud means your hands are this much dirty but i am saying like your hands are as clean as mud the dinner you served was as hot as ice so this is very contradictory sentences as well so this is called as a irony then the next one is hyperbole hyperbole is a figure of speech that consists of an exaggeration it is a usage of exaggerated terms in order to emphasize or heighten the effect of something in uh, in in our daily conversation sometimes so we just use some exaggerated words Uh, when i was waiting uh, waiting in the park of my one of my friend then what would i say in uh, if i'm going to use exaggerated word oh you are so late i have been waiting since uh, years for you in the garden so you know what i'm trying to convey i'm trying to convey that intensity of my waiting that how much i did wait so in hyperbole that you know the writer or the poet try to convey the intensity just by using these exaggerated words i have told you a million times so to not touch my stuff whoever going to tell you million times your life will spend 
if you are going to say this time this much time okay she has got a p uh, sized brain p sized brain so this is a uh, you know unusual things when we use in a hyperbole the next one is imagery in imagery when we uh, read this kind of uh, you know lines so, so we image we create some image in our mind it can be defined as the writers or speakers use of words or the figure of speech to create a vivid mental image automatically that you just assume that the autumn leaves are blanket on the ground so when the autumn arises what happens all the leaves are just broken and they mm, just spread on the floor so this kind of imagery one can imagine in the mind the next one is symbol a symbol is uh, something that stands so for or suggests something else it represents something beyond literal meaning in symbol that uh, means that a poet try to convey his own feelings with the help of some object some words uh, but that object or that words indicate something else if i am going to use a red flower that no doubt that red flower is a stand for love roses are stand for romance example the we have and violets represent shyness so there are the some kinds of things which represent some another thing so in this symbol poet try to convey his feelings with the help of using some selective words and some objects which stand for something else so this is nothing but the symbol so on this note i would like to uh, you know wind up my lesson here these are the some selected figure of his speech and this is uh, easy to understand and when you are going to write in your exam uh, in exam so example must be there without example you are not gonna get uh, a nice marks so because uh, you know in those this figure of his speech when whenever you are going to give the example then your idea uh, become very clear so when you try to you know explain uh, the figure of his speech so you have to learn some examples as well okay so here i uh, end up my lesson and uh, i would like to say thank you to you to thank you so much for join, joining me